was photo detachment of S minus, which is a little bit different than the uh, first one I showed you, Mr. Cronin. That's, that's what we ran at University of Nevada. My mentors were Dr. Cavalli and Dr. Rick Irving, and we did this at UNR. So first is what is photo detachment? It's uh, basically the severing of an electron from an atom. Uh, and from negative ions, the electron-electron uh, interactions becomes really important since the uh, valence electron is looking back at a neutral atom. So then we're really primarily focused on this. What is the angular distribution uh, of the, the system? So that way we can get the, uh, the true center of the photodetached electron, which uh, will be explained. In this slide. <laughs> anyway, um, so what we need to, a little bit of background is sort of the coupling schemes for electrons. Uh, and Ace already covered most of it. Uh, but mathematically, it's these transition rules that are important. So you can't change S or L can be 0 plus minus 1 uh, and delta J if it's 0. And this is sort of uh, the outline of the actual apparatus we used, except for this spherical sector here, we actually have a BMI lens. But other than that, it's completely the same sputter source and everything. Uh, and this is sort of a real life image of it. The 90 degree bend is sort of right behind this machine right here. And So this is a very basic understanding of what's happening. So the negative ion comes in, and it is hit by a laser. And then uh, I, the electron is excited enough that it's detached. And it accelerates to the detector, and the neutral atom moves. Now, this is just sort of a generalized coordinate system for it where this is the polarization, and the, elect the uh, electric field, and then the rest is all up there. This is the laser we use right here. And the, uh, the red one is a dye laser, so we could lower the wavelength if we needed to, just depending on whatever we were running. Uh, this is an image of the results we would get after iterating the form sometimes an hour or two. Uh, and this is the VMI lens. So this is a picture of an actual transition. So uh, say the electron comes in, I mean the photon comes in and accepts this electron up to here. And then same thing with that. So this is the negative ion state. And then the energy can decay to one of these states. This is just a picture of one of the many possible transitions. And then the energy difference is the kinetic energy of the photo detached, detached electron. Uh, and this is some of the actual photon energies that we used to measure. So as lower photon energies, we should start seeing less and less possible transitions because they're energetically not allowed. So what we're seeing, again, is just an illustration of fewer and fewer energetically allowed transitions, the different photon energies. Um, so again, this is the velocity of the ion in its center of mass frame, and then in the lab frame goes here, and this resulting vector is the velocity of the photo detached electron. So, oh, so then um, our project was to find the center of the distribution of uh, the photo detached electron. So that way we can plug it into a computer program to better understand what's happening. And it should follow 
a kinetic energy relation so that the center is purely dependent on the velocity, as we can see here, the velocity of the ion is the only thing that the center depends on. And so the center should go as 2e over n e to the 1 half power. But it doesn't look like that's happening. So this is just sort of a 3D view of what we should expect to see. The photo-detached electrons are accelerated up, and they form this three-dimensional, uh, two-dimensional image, I'm sorry, on the detector, which then we have to take all the information from. Uh, so I had to model that in SimION, which Casey already had worked out. I just had to sort of build it, which was really frustrating. <laughs> Uh, the mouse kept acting up on me. So this is it uh, running with a couple different uh, or conditions. So 2EV, 3EV, 5EV, and you can see the center starting to move accordingly to the energy. So then what I have to do now is finish uh, plugging in actual data into the model and getting a function for the center and uh, analyze that and send it back to Casey. That's it. Any questions for Travis? What, 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 what exactly is, is explaining that the center isn't where it's expected? Um, that's different uh, results we got. So what we think is happening is that there's sort of an unequal electric field on here. So when the ion comes in, say it stops here, it's going to get accelerated faster than it does here. Okay. And you can, your, your model and that's, has that uneven? Yeah, that uneven electric okay. field. I should have put in the potential lines, but that wasn't the case. Anything else? Sure, I understand the answer to that question. Yeah. So the, the it's this is the DC field here mm -hmm. that's caused by from all these electrodes you're monitoring the simian. Yep. And then that's what's uh, accelerating the electron to the detector. Right? Yeah. Um, but what you really want to know is how the um, intensity depends on the angle. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Okay. And then that would be that would be better explained so, right here at this beta. Yeah, point. yeah, right, right. But so it, it looks like the center is moving. It's not really the center is moved, right? It's just that this inhomogeneous electric field is causing it to look like the electrons are coming from a different place. Uh, yeah, so what it actually is moving the center away from that uh, kinetic energy relation. So then we need to find what, and then we're using the kinetic energy relation to get the center and plug that into our uh, analysis program. But that isn't working, so we're getting bad data. So that's where we're going to fix that. Thank you very much.